Hey everyone, welcome back to another EDM training program. My name is Dave Kalischuk. I'm the Chief Flight Instructor at Owen Sound Flight Services. And today we're covering module number two of six for the EDM 830. This is all about entering fuel. So we're going to talk through the process of measuring, metering, uh, entering, evaluating what the fuel system on the EDM 830 can do for us uh, when we have those options installed. So let's jump right into it. Step one, the first thing we're going to do when we get to the aircraft is dip the tanks. So that doesn't change from what you normally would do to check the fuel. Again, remember that the EDM-830 um, is a secondary uh, instrument only. It's not a primary replacement of anything. So we need to still take a physical dip of the fuel tanks. Use our little fuel tester, fuel uh, dipstick, and check what the level is. Okay, so after we've checked the level of the fuel with the fuel dip, um, when we start the aircraft, we're going to take a note of what the engine monitor is telling us. So one of the uh, linear gauge fields that we have there, the third one down, is fuel remaining. And fuel remaining, in this case, uh, is showing us 37.9 gallons. So we need to compare that to what it is that we dipped. Is that accurate? Is that not accurate? And make those changes. So if it's different than what we have dipped, then we need to add or remove fuel so that the EDM matches the fuel remaining that we dipped. Okay, so basically we need to take the dip, turn on the uh, engine monitor, see what it says, and then make the change in that discrepancy. And we should note that the dip is going to take precedence over the EDM. It's a slippery slope to trust what the um, EDM is telling us. Um, because maybe somebody previously entered something erroneous, or maybe um, uh, maybe the, the, the fuel flow was not calibrated properly. So we need to certainly put the precedence on the actual dip itself being the guiding factor, and uh, then make the EDM match what, we're, what we've dipped. So we're going to go through a few scenarios here on entering fuel and uh, show you some different uh, things to consider. So the number one is uh, make sure that we are comparing apples to apples. And what I mean by that is there are different calibrations when we're talking about fuel. For example, our fuel dipstick, um, typically they're in gallons. Uh, now you might have one in liters, um, but our dipsticks are in gallons. So the EDM um, is also telling us fuel remaining in gallons. That's a, actually a customizable setting that we had set. However, a lot of fuel handlers um, base fuel off of liters. So when you purchase fuel, you typically buy it in liters. And so if they're going to tell you, um, hey, I put in 60 liters or I put in 30 liters aside, um, there's going to be a little bit of math that we need to do when we make that entry into the EDM. So if we're making that change versus what we dipped versus what we see or we added fuel and someone is giving us a fuel number in a different, um, a different uh, measurement unit, then we need to apply that. So uh, what we have created for our aircraft are just little quick uh, cheat sheets in the airplane. Uh, so every airplane that uh, we have here has a little clipboard that goes with it that the keys are attached to so that people don't go home with the keys kind of like the old gas station hockey stick keychain. Um, so we have the clipboards with the keys and inside the clipboards we have uh, affixed these uh, little charts. And these are great because they have a, a liters to gallons to pounds conversion. So if someone gives you, say, uh, for example, uh, someone says uh, we need um, uh, 50 liters of fuel, uh, then we know that that's 13.2 gallons of fuel and also correlates to 79 pounds. This is also a great chart um, when we're doing air work, if we're talking about weight and balance, and uh, let's say we need uh, 2,000 pounds to be in the utility category, but our weight and balance shows that we're, we're 2,030 pounds. Well, we can look at this chart and say, oh, well, 30 pounds, I need to burn about 5.3 gallons, maybe 5.1 gallons or so, or 20 liters and that will put us uh, into the utility category. So we could even use uh, the EDM in flight to show us the fuel used for the flight. And when that fuel used shows 5.3 gallons, or maybe but the difference between the two, probably about 5.1 gallons or so, 
then we know that we've then uh, entered the utility category. So that's a pretty cool feature of sort of reverse engineering uh, this uh, information as well. Okay, so uh, dip the tanks, check what the EDM says, and then make that uh, note and make sure we're comparing apples to apples. So let's cover uh, fuel scenario one here. I'm just going to show you the full screen video and uh, then you can have a look at that and then we'll talk about what that scenario is telling us. So this one is, this full, first scenario is adding full fuel. And the example that we have arrived at the aircraft, the aircraft has just been filled up fully. How do we go about entering full fuel in the airplane? So let me get that over there for you. Okay, one of the very first things we're going to need to do with the EDM 830 when we first start up the engine is enter the current fuel state. So when we first turn the EDM 830 on, it's going to prompt us, refuel question mark. And we have to decide, is the fuel that is just being displayed here as fuel remaining equivalent to what we had dipped? So let's say, for example, that we had dipped the tanks and it was just filled up full to 38 gallons. Well, the question is, did we refuel? Is our indicated different than what we dipped? In this case, it is yes. So we press the yes button. Next, it's going to say fuel on board 38 gallons. So if we fill the tanks to full, this is a very quick way that we can quickly add full fuel to the aircraft's EDM fuel remaining. So very simply, if we did fill the aircraft full, we simply click save and it will make that change. And now we just confirm that the fuel remaining matches the fuel that we dipped at 38 gallons. So a very easy way to add full fuel on the EDM. All right, so adding full fuel. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, both tanks are topped up to full in this scenario. So the initial stage is we start by dipping the tank. We take our dip and we note what the uh, dipstick is telling us. Take a few samples to make sure that you get it right. Sometimes I have to dip the tanks two or three times before my uh, finger creates the right amount of suction on there. <laughs> I, I don't know why. 12 gallons, 14 gallons, 13 gallons, 13 gallons. Okay, it's 13 gallons. So do it until it's accurate, as accurate as possible. Okay, and then next, after we start up the aircraft and the EDM boots up, uh, we're going to make those entries and basically just follow the prompts on the screen. So the first prompt is going to be um, refuel question mark. And uh, yes, we did refuel or we added some fuel or we feel that the fuel state is currently different than it, than it was. So again, the nice thing about the dynamic menu system is it's going to show you um, this black button now is the yes and the white button is the no. So if we uh, agree or disagree, we just click the corresponding button. So in this case, refuel, yes, we're going to tap the yes button. Then the next thing we see at the bottom is fuel on board 38 gallons. This is a very quick way for us to uh, enter a full fuel state. Again, the 38 gallons was a pre-programmed uh, amount that we had set. And uh, if we agree and say, yeah, it's uh, full of fuel, then we just click on yes. And then we take a note of the fuel remaining. So uh, 38 gallons full, and now it says 37.9. Uh, the EDM is actually smart enough to calculate the fuel that's burning in the background while you spend the time trying to figure out which buttons to press. So it's also, uh, if it doesn't show 38, that's just because it's taking you that much more time to enter the, uh, the fuel state. So pretty smart unit there. Um, pretty straightforward. Full fuel, very easy. Pre-programmed for the most part. Follow the prompts, and away you go. Let's look at scenario number two now, um, adding or removing fuel. What if the fuel was not exactly, um, wasn't exactly what we dipped, but also wasn't full either? Let's take a look at that scenario. Put that over there for you. Okay, the next scenario we're going to look at is We've added some fuel, but not full fuel. So we turn on the engine monitor, and we see there is 28 gallons remaining being displayed. Now let's say for this example, we dip the tanks at 32 gallons. Well, did we refuel? Well, whether we did or we didn't, we still need to make a change to this number. So we're going to click on yes, and then it's going to say, is there full fuel on board? 
And in this case, no, we don't have 38 gallons, but in this scenario we are saying that we have maybe dipped 32 gallons. So we need to make a change, so let's make a change by clicking that button there. The next question says add or subtract fuel on board. Well, yes, we do want to make a change by adding some fuel. We're going to click the yes button, and then it asks us how much do you want to change by. Well, we have to do a little bit of math here. And the EDM says 28 gallons, and we dipped 32, so we need to make a change by 4 gallons. Now, we're going to hold down this button up here, the black button, and that's going to increase the amount of fuel in there. If we hold that, it, the number goes up. If we tap it, the number goes down. So if we overshoot the amount that we need to fuel by, we just tap until we get back there, or we hold until we go up again to that number. The longer you hold, the faster it will go. So we need to ch make a change by adding 4 gallons of fuel to make this say 32. Once we have that set, we click Save, and now it says it's adjusted it by 4 gallons, and it displays 32 there. So just make sure that whatever you dip is being displayed on here. Make sure that the fuel dip matches the fuel remaining. The fuel dip is always going to take precedence. We're going to make sure that we're always entering that data from the dipstick into the engine monitor. If there's a discrepancy here between this and the dip of more than one gallon, that's when we're going to make that change. That's sort of our internal policy. More than one gallon discrepancy, we're going to update the EDM. All right, awesome. So a couple more moving parts to this one, but not a lot. In this scenario, um, some fuel was added, but not full fuel. <clears throat> and the fuel we dipped doesn't match the EDM. So let's say we dipped 16 gallons on the left tank and 16 on the right, and we had 32 gallons in total. But we notice that the engine monitor says 28. So there's a discrepancy there, and we need to, we need to remedy that. <clears throat> so uh, the difference between the two is 4 gallons. So we just need to make a change of 4 gallons. Now, one of the policies that we wrote in here um, to try and balance the man versus machine uh, aviation life is if the discrepancy between what we dip and what the EDM shows is any more than one gallon, then we want to make a change in that unit. So if, for example, um, we dip 16 and 16 for 32 and we dipped 31, we could leave it as is. We could leave the EDM saying 31. It does error on the safe side, telling us we have less fuel than what we actually have. And if it said 33, again, we could, we could leave that too, because our policy is that, uh, well, first of all, legally, we have to land with some fuel in the tank, right? So day VFR reserve means we need to land with half an hour of fuel in the tank. So that's going to have us land with at least four and a half gallons in the tank. Um, now, we have alarms set on the unit to um, notify us when there are eight gallons of fuel in the tank or less left. So that's going to be another uh, way to catch any issue if we were out by a gallon. Um, you have the uh, right and the, uh, to update the EDM um, to exactly the number if it's not exactly what you dipped. So feel free to make that, that change anytime, but don't let it be any more than one gallon out. Um, just for our internal policy, that's what we've decided. You could set your own parameter uh, for your own aircraft and determine what's right for you. It's, um, you know, is the EDM more accurate than what we are dipping with our finger on the suction? Um, probably, but again, remember that that first indication that the EDM took its information from was from somebody else's dip and their finger on the dipstick. So, was it, is it any more accurate um, when it's coming from a long line of erroneous entries? Not, not really. Sort of the buck stops with you, right? You have to be the one to give it the best shot you got and reset, recalibrate um, that, uh, that um, amount of fuel on board. So the best thing that we could do is just each time try to take an accurate dip as best we can and enter that data. And uh, we'll give you a grace period of plus or minus a gallon um, so that it's within a reasonable tolerance and accuracy, okay? So, uh, if the discrepancy is greater than one gallon, then we require a correction, and just remember that the dipstick takes precedence over uh, the EDM number itself, and simply follow the prompts to adjust fuel. So, when we first start up, it says refuel, question mark, yes. Um, in this case, it doesn't always have to be a matter of refueling. It could be 
even if we didn't refuel but we, we dipped and we noticed a discrepancy that was greater than uh, one gallon. Uh, let's say the aircraft was parked somewhere on the apron and uh, the EDM was out by two gallons or three gallons. Um, even if we didn't refuel, we still need to uh, click yes to acknowledge um, the fact that we need to make a change to the fuel. So you can consider the refuel question as also a, a change to fuel or a change to the fuel state. So in this case, yes, we, we did refuel or we want to make a change to the fuel state. So we click the yes button. And then it says, um, is your fuel on board 38 gallons? And no, in this case, it's not full. We need to actually make an adjustment. Okay, so we're going to click on the change button. And then it's going to say, adjust, uh, add, subtract fuel on board. And uh, yes, this is what we want to do. So we want to click the yes button. We want to add or subtract some fuel on board. And next it's going to say, um, uh, change by. There's going to be a change by with a plus or minus. So this is the most complicating part. Basically, um, you're going to use the change button on the right in the, at this time. Let's get my laser pointer up here. So, and if you tap this button, it's going to subtract fuel. And if you hold it down, it's going to add fuel. So holding is more. If you hold longer, you're going to add more fuel. If you tap, you're going to remove fuel. Okay, so it's going to start at zero at the bottom and we have to decide whether we're going up or down. And in this scenario, we dipped uh, 32, but we're showing 28. So we need to hold this to add the discrepancy. In some cases, you might be tapping it to subtract the discrepancy. So we're going to hold it till we get plus four. 28 plus four equals 32. Life is good. And then we can make that change. So after we've done that, you'll see, um, It'll say, it'll actually say adding four gallons and it'll say initial fuel 32 and then also up in the uh, area where the um, fuel remaining is, it will also show uh, 32 gallons remaining there. Okay, so um, we need to also make sure that we're confirming every time as well. Once you've made the change, confirm that the information uh, says what you want it to say. It's, it's actually easier than you think to make a mistake at this stage. It's, it's easier than you think to... Um, put in some um, predisposition number here and, and enter something erroneously. So you really have to take a second and think about what you're doing because um, this is this is the garbage in, garbage out scenario. The the computer is only as smart as the the person entering the data, and if you're entering data erroneously, you're going to get erroneous um, readings uh, moving forward, and that could be as dangerous as. Um, as anything else in aviation. So you're relying on a number then that's suddenly not as accurate as you were expecting it to be. So take your time, um, have an idea of what that number should say, confirm that number is what you want it to say, and then move on from there. Okay, uh, let's look at scenario three. Scenario three is going to be, um, what if we screwed up? <laughs> what if we pressed the wrong button? What if we got into some menu system and we can't get out? Or we entered the wrong fuel amount and we need to fix that? So that's scenario three. Fortunately, there's a, there's a fix for that. So let me just pull up that video for you here as well. Now in this last scenario, what if we need to make an adjustment to the fuel level after we've already gone through this prompt? Now we don't get the prompt for refuel anymore because we've already made an entry and it's already saved that entry. Well, very simply, the top two buttons, if you hold them for about two or three seconds, you'll again get the program menu come up and ask if you want to refuel. So from here, we can again make that change. So let's say we need to make a change to 32 gallons. It wasn't actually 32. It was maybe just 30 gallons of fuel. We accidentally put the wrong number in. We're going to make that change by not adding full fuel, but change that. Uh, add or subtract fuel is a yes. We want to subtract some fuel. And then how much do we want to change by? Well, let's say our scenario is we dipped 30 gallons, so we need to subtract 2 gallons of fuel. I went too far, so I'm going to hold it to go back the other way. So minus 2 gallons, and then save. And we just confirm again that the EDM shows the number that we want, 30. That's the number that we dipped from the tank. So anytime there's a discrepancy greater than one gallon, we're always going to update the EDM to display what we dipped. And the dipstick is going to take precedence. That's going to be how we define what is in the tank.
So this is only going to display information as long as we are accurately putting in information there. And then we'll calculate in-flight the gallons per hour used. But we always have to rely on what is our approved method. And that is what we dip and what we enter into here. As the saying goes, garbage in, garbage out. We need to make sure that we're putting accurate data into the EDM each time. All right, so fortunately, um, JPI has uh, assumed that we're going to uh, probably screw something up <laughs> in this process, and they've given us a way to remedy that. Uh, so um, the scenario is that um, something is not right. Uh, we need to make a change after the fact, but that refuel prompt is no longer there. How do we get that refuel prompt back up again? So the EDM says 32 gallons, but there's no prompt for uh, refuel. Basically, just got to hold down the two buttons at the top, step and lean fine, for about three seconds, and then we get that prompt for fuel again. It's the same menu system once again. Refuel, yes, and we go through that process of adding or subtracting fuel. If we need to subtract fuel again, it's tapping on the change button. If we're adding fuel, it's holding the change button. And uh, basically then just confirming that uh, it's now accurate to what we had dipped. So, um, the machine is only as accurate as we can program it to be. Um, so take your time with this. It really doesn't take much time. After startup, this is one of the first things that we do on the checklist. And uh, honestly, uh, maybe 30 seconds at the most, a minute allows the engine to warm up anyways and uh, kind of get yourself set. So take your time with this and don't rush it and uh, make sure that you enter the fuel accurately. The dipstick takes precedence and um, any, any differential more than one gallon, we want to update the EDM to show what we dipped. And that way it keeps it in line sequentially as the day goes on with multiple pilots flying. Okay, uh, lastly we'll talk about some fuel flow features that are built into the EDM um, that we've briefly touched on already in some of the intro uh, videos. I'll show you a quick JPI video here that uh, reflects that. So let me bring this up full screen for you. For fuel calculations to be accurate, it is imperative that you enter into the EDM-830 the correct amount of fuel aboard the aircraft. The fuel flow feature provides these values in the indexing sequence. They are time to empty at the current fuel rate burn displayed in hours and minutes, gallons per hour, total fuel used since last refueling, or accumulated since the last time the total was reset. Fuel remaining in all tanks. If you have your GPS interfaced with your EDM 830, you will have the following additional values. Fuel required to the next GPS fix. The fuel reserve you'll have on reaching the next fix and nautical miles per gallon based on the current ground speed and fuel burn rate. Okay, so uh, some of the features are um, fuel flow rate, gallons per hour. Okay, so we get that on the EDM. We also get fuel remaining in gallons and the total fuel used since the last refuel. The total fuel used is actually a customizable um, program in a way. So you can either set it so that it, um, it resets uh, automatically or you can set it to accumulate uh, fuel throughout different legs if you're on a cross-country leg with multiple flights. Um, ours is set to um, uh, refuel each time. Every time it's going to prompt us to uh, add fuel, it, it resets it. Um, we can also reset total fuel used um, in flight as well if you notice that it was uh, not not reset for some reason. So there's an option to also make that zero out so it uh, continues to retally from the time that you're flying. Uh, then we have time to empty and endurance which in hours and minutes, which again as I mentioned in the in the first introduction video is a really amazing feature especially to see the effects of power changes and leaning and how that changes um, how much time we can fly. The overall fuel consumption drops by a couple of points and uh, we can really see that um, in the endurance and also in the, in the range. Um, then when we integrate a GPS like a Garmin 530 or an Aero 500 or any of the Garmin GTN uh, series or, or any even uh, the Avidyne systems, any integration with Garmin or GPS um, systems will give us additional information. It'll give us uh, fuel required to the next GPS fix, uh, the fuel reserve at the next GPS fix, and nautical miles per gallon. 
Um, so if our next GPS fix is our destination, then it will tell us how much fuel is uh, going to be on board when we land there and how much fuel is required to get there. So in a VFR w world, you could use a direct to function and take me direct to this airport and uh, it will give you the fuel um, remaining to that, um, to that waypoint. In the IFR world, where you maybe have multiple uh, waypoints or nav aids or, or legs in between, um, you're only going to get the fix to the next waypoint. So if you wanted to get information on how much will I have when I get there, uh, you could do a quick direct to uh, function in the background and then see that data. Um, unless you're on your last leg, it's not going to show you accurately how much fuel remains to the destination. So uh, that is basically it for the fuel flow, fuel data, fuel entry. Just remember some of the key things are the dip stick takes precedence. Take your time entering the data into the system. The system is only as smart as the person that enters the information. And uh, double check and make sure that the system is telling you accurately what, what you want it to say. Um, if you do those things, then you'll have a really reliable, uh, amazing secondary source of information to uh, increase the safety of the flight, to help you manage the efficiency of the flight for refueling purposes. You know, you can make those decisions on your own at the end of a flight. Where should I park? Well, EDM says I got 11 gallons left. Ain't nobody going flying with 11 gallons of fuel. <laughs> Probably not. So you can park at the fuel pumps, you know, so you can, um, you can be uh, a better pilot as a result of this fuel system. And uh, in order to take advantage of this, it requires the addition of the fuel flow transducer, uh, which is a great feature, just one of the many more probes and add-ons that you can uh, put into the EDM system. Uh, we pretty much maxed out just about everything <laughs> that, that could be done, we did do. So uh, uh, we're taking advantage of all those features and it's great. The fuel flow transducer is one of the best add-ons you could do to this system. It just, uh, especially if, it, if you have a GPS on board, the integration, um, and even the Garmin 530 integration, there's actually a couple of pages in the Garmin 530 GPS as well that uh, under the trip planning that talk about um, range in miles, in nautical miles, total range and that, that kind of scenario too. So really excellent stuff. That's fuel. That's module two. I won't talk any longer. And we'll see you for module three. Uh, next up for the modules is, let me just take a quick peek here. Uh, oh, an overview of some of the uh, systems on board the aircraft. Uh, some of the switches and numerical display and that kind of thing. So look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks. Take care.